Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. This has been Kenny. I can't stop laughing, but I can't tell you why. I'm joined today with Dumb and Dumber, which is Mr. Chad Himes and Bob Stewart. Wait, wait, and I, then that means I'm dumb and you're oh, dumber. Yes. And then I get to be the actual dumbest because I put up with these guys every week and they're cracking me up today. Bob, you and I, we went out for some lunchy today and you kind of came up with an idea for a topic. Well, I was supposed to, I had some on my calendar at 1 30 that I committed to just earlier in the, in the afternoon. And when you started taking us away from the office and I realized we were getting further and further away from me being able to be back by 1 30, I texted Jolene um, and said, Hey, I, I'm in the car with Ben. I'm kind of at his whim. I don't think I'm going to be back by 1 30. I don't have much control over what's going on right now. And she responded and said, uh, that's okay. Embrace it. I'm sure you guys are going to turn right. And, and so we've had this, this, uh, this saying in the company for like the last year, Ben, of turn right. So we, we want to talk today about turning right. But tell us, where did that come from? Yeah, it's, a, it's an appropriate time to kind of go back and, and tell this story because uh, I think a lot of people are feeling today like I was feeling a little over a year ago, yeah. right? W what are some of the feelings that, that people are bringing to us lately? Maybe things like uh, stuck in a rut. I, I um, depressed. You know, yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit sad or depressed. I don't know why necessarily. Or um, unmotivated, yeah, burnout, worried, uncertain. There's just feelings, right? Yep. So it was July seventh, I think, and I got done with the meeting at about eight p.m. and I was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho which is about five hours or six hours. You drive fast, by the way. Home. I, I've driven that one a few times. That, that's a six and a half hour drive. Sure. If you drive like, like, like Bob's mom, then it'll take <laughs> you six hours. But for the rest of Wait, us. She's listening to this, and she's now going to come after you. Gail actually drives pretty fast. Yeah, she, uh, <laughs> My I, grandma I, was like a friggin' Mario Andretti. All right, shut up. So, <laughs> so, so we get done with this meeting, and I'm driving north towards the big freeway, which is? I-5. Thank you for not knowing I your 90. geography. <laughs> I-90. I-90 goes east and west. To you, not me. I drove on I-5 today. What do you want from me, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm driving up to this, to this interstate, 90, Bob, and yeah. I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be like 1 in the morning when I get home. I'm going to drive up here. I'm going to take a left on I-90, and I'm going to drive all the way to i Five. Five. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to head to Bellingham, and it's going to be really late, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow, go back to work. I'm going to be tired. And I'm just driving, driving to the road, and I get to the freeway, and for whatever reason, instead of going left, I turn right. And I-90 goes east and west, basically from Seattle, right, saltwater, east, all the way to gosh knows where. The Atlantic Ocean. Coast ba to coast. Basically. Yeah, basically. So I turn right, and I end up in Missoula. Well, we have a partner and a friend there named, named Jason, right? Jason Baker in and, and Missoula. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe Jason and I will get to fly fish for a day or two. So I called Jason. I said, Jason, I, I ended up in Missoula, Montana. You're not going to believe this. And he's like, what? I just landed in Vegas. I'm like, ah, <laughs> right? And so I, I hang around with, in Missoula for a day, and, and I'm like, eh, I'm going to go see something else. So I go to Bozeman, and I run into a, a, a friend there, a, a buddy, and he says, hey, we should go fishing. So we go fly fishing for a day. But the rivers were kind of flooded, and I go to this uh, – museum of something but they have tyrannosaurus rex fossils and i love fossils you know and i, and I get to nerd out there for a couple of days and i'm like well, i'm gonna keep on going going right might as well you know and i end up in billings and got some friends from wyoming people came in i had dinner and i'm like you know what i've never seen before mount rushmore like i've never seen mount rushmore and i'm gonna go to mount rushmore now mind you i hadn't planned this trip so i had the clothes that i was wearing Right. And I was in my truck, Ford 150. Right. And I'm driving my truck and, you know, and, and I'm a couple of days into this. So I go to 
some store, Cabela's or whatever, and I buy a T-shirt and a pair of shorts, you know, and and a fly rod, and, and I get a couple things, and I throw it in my truck, and I keep going. Well, I, I end up in uh, Spearfish, uh, uh, South Dakota, I think, and, and you know, know a couple people in that area too, and, and but I drive off by myself, and I end up at Mount Rushmore by myself. And uh, I don't know if I like I overestimated <laughs> like what happens at Mount Rushmore. You thought there was going to be like like the clouds would part, the sun would shine down, and the bells would ring, and I've a little bit underwhelming. I, I've I, heard I, it's I smaller than you think it is. <laughs> well, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, I what? apologize for everybody who's listening to this episode because we're in a mood right now. I'm going to try not to be Michael Scott right here. I'm, just, I'm doing everything. So I'm I can. looking at Mount Rushmore, right? I grab an ice cream cone, and uh, no, I stared, that? Huh? I, no, I stared at people having an ice cream cone. I didn't because I decided <laughs> to be on a diet on this road trip. So I had like a burger with no bun. So anyway, I was staring at kids with ice cream cones thinking, how do I steal it? And I'm there for like 15 minutes. I'm like, well, seen that. you know. So, so when I leave, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I, I drive into Sturgis. I right, think that's going to be cool, but it's like before all the motorcycle people get there, and yeah. there was nothing there, right? And Some T-shirts you could buy probably. So I'm like, well, I'm going to keep on going right because I want to see the Badlands, and the Badlands are one of the coolest places in the U.S. This, I think it's a national park or whatever. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's amazing. One of my favorite places. Well, to not bore you with like every stop and every person I ran into across the the world, I drove. I mean, I drove across the Midwest. I drove some of those days. I drove the entire day because there's not a whole lot of things to see, believe it or not, as you're meandering your way through Iowa, yeah. <laughs> right? And and no I offense up, to anybody listening in Iowa. No, no, no offense to our I've Iowa. I've driven friends. that. that it's Although you, you're, you know Ben's right. You know what I did in Iowa is I read four books in one day because I just kept going. Right. Audible, yeah. Yeah. And I got to the end of Iowa and I and I had to go see the uh what's the uh antique picker show, the oh, yeah. American Pickers. Yeah, I had I to go that. see their store their store in Davenport and well uh I end up at the in Connecticut at the East Coast and I'd I had driven all the way from the Pacific Ocean all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. And I go off and I'm by myself <laughs> and I go and I sit at a picnic table and it was a little bit emotional. I'd been driving for a couple of weeks and I hadn't planned this. And uh, I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to watch the sunset on the Atlantic Ocean. And I'm just sitting there and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself <laughs> that this is going to be beautiful. And the seagull comes and it lands on this picnic table in front of me. And, and uh, I'm sitting there, you know, uh, looking at the seagull thinking, this might be my mom because my mom loves seagulls. She had like seagull ornaments and just just loved seagulls. I mean, I thought maybe it was my mom visiting me to watch the sunset. And then I started thinking like, what's the seagull thinking? Like the seagull is probably thinking, hope this dude has a sandwich or something, you know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, is that mom? You know, and he's staring at me. And and but what he was really thinking was, you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I didn't know why he was thinking that. And and, and it gets later and later. There's no sunset now, Bob. Why is there no sunset in Connecticut on the Atlantic well, Ocean? Um, this was really Wait. easy for me to remember growing up because my initials are R-E-S. I'm a junior, so R-E-S-J. But R-E-S, it uh, rises in the east and it sets in the west, right? So you were facing the east and it was setting behind you. But you grew up. It's, you I'll give you an Bob. out on this one. We grew up on the, you know, in Washington State where the water – We've sun. seen sunsets on the water. For 40 plus years over yeah. the water is where the sun sets. So. That's what it does on the ocean every day, yeah, right? But, but if you're on the East Coast, <laughs> nope, you're missing out. Yeah, it, you well, wake up early. early. Beautiful sun rises That's over right. the water. Yes. Not when I get up. <laughs> the sun has risen. Anyway, so you, what happens when you're going right and you run into the Atlantic Ocean? Either you swim, right? You turn sink right your truck again. or you turn right. Yep. So I turned right and I went down the, the East Coast and I went through – New York and saw some friends in New York and visited this vintage poster place that I like and, you know, stopped by and saw my friend Sue in Short Hills, New Jersey and meandered my way south and caught some fish with another friend named Greer in, in Charleston. And and then I turned another right because nobody wants to go into Florida. No. <laughs> and, and, and I went across and uh, Georgia, I, I met up with this archaeologist, uh, paleontologist guy that had a bunch of fossils and spent a day with him and in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. Did you buy something there? Is that one of those in yeah, your yeah, office? Is yeah, that I got a, a yeah, saber cool. tooth 
yeah. uh, tiger thing from he him. He didn't Good. stay long enough to have dinner with one of his friends who happened to live in Georgia. He knew time. your ass was going to be here before long. <laughs> Chad, Chad, actually, we did have plans. And I'm like, I'm going to be there at 8. And he's like, oh, sorry, I've already eaten. We're going to bed. <laughs> like the one time in my life I'm driving through Georgia. I said breakfast the next morning. <laughs> and he's like... No, sorry, it's too late for Nita and I. We had dinner at 444. Don't act surprised. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty disappointing. Anyway, so I drive across the south, and I, and I go through New Mexico and Arizona and Texas and end up in California. When you got to take a right right in California, you know, and anyway, I, I end up home. So I spent 57 days with no destination any day, just driving to whatever place I wanted to go and staying as long as I wanted to go. I went 9,000 miles in my Ford 150. And the day before I get home, I stop in the mountains around Wenatchee, Washington, and meet up with with our friend Tim, and and we're out just looking at wild animals and camping out in the woods. And I'm nine thousand miles and fifty seven days straight of driving, and my freaking truck breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hundred miles from home, and my truck breaks down, and I'm almost there. Sounds like a country song. Well, I, I got some time to reflect because I was sitting in the middle of the woods, you know, and. And, and I really thought about the trip. And the trip meant something more than taking a break. Because I worked every day, I read books every day, I took calls when I had to, I kept everything going in the right direction. Some of my people said it was actually, they were more productive with me than I was when I was here, so some people want me to leave again. But I had a lot of ahas in, in life and a lot of takeaways, and we kinda came up with a phrase now today, Bob, turning right. Yeah. And turning right is when you decide at some point things in your world have to change. And instead of going the normal left that you always go every single day, right, you do something different and you turn right. And so we might want to encourage you if you're feeling a little bit down or you got something you're challenged with or struggling with, maybe you could turn right and make some changes. So let's talk through, Bob, maybe some of the takeaways from the from the trip. So I and I love this around we 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 try to do this as much as possible around here. Look, it's not always easy, but the, the best answers are the ones you can act on now. Uh, simple is the secret, I think, is, uh, is something that, that kind of came to you during this time. Why? Like, why are the best? Well, I mean, I think it, maybe it's kind of intrinsically obvious why the best answers are the ones you can act on now, right? But why is simple the secret? Well, I think as if I was, if I was driving through there, I thought if I'm going to spend 57 days away from home, and I want to come back and I want to change some things in my life so I can get my energy back and get focused and feel productive and be happy and all sort of things. And I have to change some things. Well, when things are super complicated, you come up with lots of reasons why you can't change it, right? And, and you actually don't, don't do anything. I also found that the vast majority of answers were already inside my head. I just needed time to think about it. Right. In, so, in some ways, boil them down, yeah. right? The answer's got all this stuff around it. When you boil it down to this, the simple answer. Process it, right? Eliminate some things, narrow it down, have some conversations, read some books, that sort of thing. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, this is what I got to do. And I did some, you know, some minor things and some major things. Like a minor thing I did was I moved my office to a different location in the building in a place where I could shut the door and have some time to focus on my priorities. Well, another one of the takeaways that I wrote down on my trip was keep time on your calendar to think, keep time on your calendar to work on your priorities, and keep time on your calendar to refuel. What I realized was before the trip, all day, every day was booked up. And when I reflected on my calendar, the vast majority of my time was working on other people's priorities instead of my own you know that's you know I'll, I'll, I'll like maybe hold the mirror up for you it's interesting because you know as we were going to lunch today and jolene was telling us to turn right you had said you're feeling a little bit burned out you'd also said to us that you're starting to pack people onto your calendar in the early mornings and after work and it's probably not a coincidence that you're feeling burned out as you're starting to pack things onto your calendar maybe leaving yourself less time for for refueling as I, th I mean, you're always thinking and working on your own priorities. I mean, you're pretty good at that, but maybe you're, maybe you're eliminating some of that refuel time that you've been keeping on your calendar for the last year here recently. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I kind of summarized it a little bit and said, I need to keep 25 to 50% of my calendar open every day to work on whatever's important to me. 
Now, you can't plan it because you don't know, Chad, what's going to be important to you in a week because it's a week away. You have to have time to change. So if you had an hour or two hours or something available every single day for you to work on something important, could be your finances or your health or your relationships or your business or with your employees or a project or launching something new, you'd probably be way better off than you are now when you try to squeeze in things when they become an emergency or become a problem. Now, another message that we came up with was make sure we're chasing the right things. The, the end outcome should dictate our priorities, Chad. Our end outcome, what we want to accomplish, should dictate our focus. And that our end outcome should be represented on our calendar. When I say that, what comes to mind, Chad? Well, start with the end in mind is going to be the, the saying that comes to me when you say that, Ben. Um, because we have to know where we're going. And then we have to be able and one, we have to make sure it's not too far away. We've talked about that on past episodes. You can't plan a year out where you're going because look what happened this year and look what happens all the time. We have to make changes. But that it's having, where am I going? What is my goal, short-term goal that's right in front of me? And if I looked at your calendar, would I be able to identify what that was? Right? I don't know how many people will tell you what their goal is. Oh, Ben, I'm going to lose this many pounds, or I'm going to sell this many widgets, or I'm going to whatever it is. And then when you say, let me see your calendar, you would never have guessed what their goal was going to be because that's nowhere on the calendar whatsoever. It doesn't reflect it. Not at all. They say they're going to do this, or here's one thing that people do a lot. They say, this is important to me, being a dad, being a spouse, being a friend, being a partner, whatever, being healthy, but it doesn't. it's not on there. If you looked at it, there's no, there's no, no time night. for it, right? or it's not prioritized. Correct. And we have to make sure that we know what that is so that you can figure out what those priorities are every day to, when you wake up. Yeah. What are my priorities today? And yeah. priorities, again totally different conversation, you know, that's like firstuses. Yep. We have a priority, not priorities, but we need to know what that's going to be so that we then can figure out what we're focused on. And of course, as said, it should be reflected on our calendar. Yeah. Being gone for that long, I don't know if you guys have ever been gone from home for that amount of time. I think, Bob, you and me, we've been on the road for that many days in a year just traveling for work, but maybe not. Yeah, not gone consecutively. Cons consecutive. I used to do that in my early 20s, but not since I've really had like a home. When, yeah. I was, when I was a kid, only due to divorced parents, I was gone for 57 days at least over the summer when it was go off and, and stay with, with my father. Yeah, but you know, it was a tough time, Ben. It was, obviously, it was before texting and email and all that stuff when I did it. So it was hard to stay in touch with my friends. So I'd come back at the end of the summer and attempt to drop back in and have to kind of pick up and all the inside jokes I've missed out on that happened over the summer and stuff. How did you keep those relationships? I wanted to ask you, I didn't want to interrupt the story. First of all, how long was it before you even told anybody you weren't coming back? I didn't even tell people really where I was or what I was doing. I <laughs> wanted them to assume I was going to walk into work that day. Well, we were, we were uh, following you. Like Jason Baker was like, Hey, what's Ben doing in my area? I'm like, I don't know, but he's in your area. Okay. Like, so we had, we had a net out around there. Here, there was like a spotting. Oh, where's yeah. Ben? Spotting. Where's Ben Kinney today? Wait, where's Waldo? Yes. You so, know, I, I thought about that, Chad, when I was, when I was there that I didn't miss my house. Right. I didn't miss things. I didn't miss the office. Right. I didn't, I, I missed people. And when you have that opportunity to miss something, you get to reflect on what matters to you. And one of the things I wrote down in my journal as I was going was that relationships matter, that keeping relationship with your top people and your most important people makes a difference and that it doesn't take much time to do so. I had more 5, 10, or 15-minute conversations with people while I was gone than I had in a year being back. Mm -hmm. I had, was more connected with people because I had time available between between stops. So, so give me Basically. a tip or two for the people that are listening that aren't going away for 57 days, but we know relationships matter. So are you putting that on your calendar again to make five minute calls? Is it text messages? Is it social media? How do we keep those relationships? Here, here would be an easy way to do that. I want you to, to, to take three people every day. If you're in business, follow this advice. One friend, one employee or somebody you're in business with and one customer. 
every day. What would it be like if you just reached out to one of those people every single day with no agenda other than saying, just checking on you. How are you? How are things going? So one friend, one employee or coworker Partner, or, or whatever that might be, right? Okay. And then one customer. One customer. Just every day. Like you could literally hit one on your drive to work, right? Drop the kids off at daycare, Bob, on the way back, you check on one oh, yeah, person. I was going to say drive to work. I work from home. So. Yeah. <laughs> but I do have to take the kids to yeah. daycare. One, one lunch, you're going to go for a walk and you're going to take that and you're going to call somebody. And one at the end of the day. That would make a difference. You would have more personal connection and you would have stronger relationships if you just did that, right? I have like a set time when I usually check on my dad. Like I usually call my dad probably Friday nights on my drive home to see how his week was. And then I ask, what are you doing, right? Swing by this weekend or I'll see you or whatever. And I'll try to see him the weekend. That's kind of my set time when I would do that, right? I do the same thing with my dad. I call him on the drive home from Bellingham every Wednesday. Yeah. Mine's my mom Saturday morning. Yeah. There you go. Right, so maybe maybe the fourth one is one person in your one person in your family, and you will find that those relationships will start to matter more to you. When you don't have that communication, you don't have that that make that a priority. They start drifting away. You forget how much you laugh when you when you hang out with your friends, right? And tell tell those old stories or, or the or the family. We'll uh, stay away from your old stories. I, I was just going to say future episode six hundred three six hundred three. Save that 603. for later. Six hundred three. Absolutely, <laughs> that's that's our favorite address. And now, add all these things up. Here's our takeaway from turning right. When things get rough, when you're starting to feel down, and you feel like you can't quite handle it, just turn right. Don't don't go the same direction. Just change something. You don't have to disappear for two months. But you could disappear for an hour or a day or a weekend or 15 minutes of work. Just change something. Go to somewhere else for lunch. Walk somewhere else. Just leave. And what I found is that taking that with many rights has stopped me from having to take a major right again. That if I can keep time on my calendar, and thank you for calling me out on that, Bob, because it's been a busy week. Yeah. Uh, if I can simplify things down into things I can act on now, that if I truly believe simple is the secret, I'm going to be better. If I take the time to do the one, 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 right, and reach out to relationships because they matter, and I make sure that I'm chasing the right things in my life, there's only one other thing that I came up with that I needed to keep in mind that I need to think about, and I wrote down, that I don't focus on what might happen in the future. Don't focus on what everybody else is doing. And don't focus on what everybody else says is coming. And I think now is a really good time for that last sentence, right? There's a lot of fear of what's going to happen with an election or the stock market or the economy or the real estate market or the world, right? Global warming or what other problems. I could spend a lot of my time and energy worrying about the future or I could really focus on living right now in the present. What are they, the, the saying is, um, if you spend too much, I mean, I'll butcher this, but the idea is if you spend too much time thinking about the past, you're probably depressed. And if you spend too much time thinking about the future, you're highly anxious. Yeah. Um, and you have anxiety, right? That, that sweet spot is living in the now. Yeah. So let's, let's end this. I'll give you guys a list, Chad. <gasps> Yay, a list. Uh, 9,000 miles, drove through over 30 states, read over 40 books. Uh, there is a couple of locations that stand out to me that if you're looking for somewhere in the world to go, I'll give you a few, few of my favorites along the trip. All right. Uh, there's, there's really nothing better than uh, Missoula and Bozeman if you want to explore Montana. Just make sure you get an hour away from those towns and go see what the real wilderness in the world looks like and go see a river or a canyon. Uh, the Badlands of South Dakota are some of the more incredible things I've ever seen. They're just bison walking across the street and bighorn sheep running around, and it's just phenomenal. And rattlesnakes everywhere, and it's hot, and it's it's it, but it's it's incredible and it's beautiful. As you continue uh, across the U.S., there's a bunch of amazing little tiny towns all over from Iowa and Nebraska that if you get off the main freeway and you drive a little bit. You can go to some of the best diners and best little old towns and just walk up a main street that's a half mile long that you've ever seen. As you get to the East Coast, uh, Burlington, Vermont was 
where my friend Adam lives was what what a surprise. What a what a great place. Chicago is a is a city that if you like to eat and you like to be a tourist, it's a great place to be. Uh and then Charleston. What a great city. Cool city. Yeah. Right. A great city of food and history and so on. I'll give you a couple other last ones. The White Sands National Park in New Mexico. One of the more beautiful places that I've ever seen. The sand is so white, it blinds you. I actually blend in when I stand <laughs> on it. But, but for the rest of us, it, it just blinds you. And then throughout New Mexico, there's all these really interesting uh, cave dwellings where you can hike in a half mile or a mile and see this city that used to exist in the center of a canyon that's built into the walls. It just blows yeah. you away. And then the the cactus forests of of, of uh, Arizona, Cigarros, is that how you say yeah. those? Yeah, pretty, pretty phenomenal. Of course, you got to see uh, Yellowstone. And then, you know, my you favorite. You go through Yellowstone? Uh, the other one in California. Yosemite. Yosemite. Yeah. Yeah, Yosemite. Yellowstone's, I think, a little bit better in Yosemite. But I did swing through. Super cool. I did swing through there. I stopped and met a couple of people I'd never met before, a, a fellow Clash of Clans buddy <laughs> in, in Southern California, That's another awesome. one in Indianapolis. You right? never know what might connect you to something. You never know, right? And then I ended up in one of my favorite places, which is the Pacific Northwest, which, which I called home. And if you take enough rights, you eventually end up home. home. Isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. You know, we used to call it Ben was off the grid. Now you're turning right. So, folks, even if you can't turn right, like Ben said, and actually go on it, you can go off the grid. You can turn right and just take that little time to make a change. Our piece of advice for you today from all the things you just heard from Ben is this. Don't be a passenger in the car with Ben driving if you're not ready for an adventure to possibly happen because you never know when he might turn right with you there. Folks, remember, join us in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash give. Let's hear about some of your tales as you've traveled across this wonderful country. And don't stop visiting winmakegive.com where you can share the podcast with others. And of course, you can find out all the links that we've been sharing in all of our episodes. Check out the stuff happening at winmakegive.com. Until our next episode, wash those hands, turn right, and as always, do good. <laughs>